morning. My name is the old mechanic. And what do we got today in my shed? A Yamaha Diversion. Um, it really needs some love. I have to do renew the spark plugs, put a new air filter into it, new oil and an oil filter, brake fluid. All I can say now is come on over and we're gonna start. So guys, over here is the oil drain plug and it's socket 17. Eén, twee, wap. Yes. Then. Ah, yeah. Sure, I'm gonna get oil on my fingers. Eén, twee, eén, twee. No. There he goes. Hop. <laughs> so. So. I unscrewed the filler cap. So the oil can run out more easy, I think. So. To get the oil filter off. That's also very easy. I have this tool. It's a Chinese brand, the FN005. Oh, get it on the oil filter. This is 19 mil. And we're gonna unscrew the oil filter. Okay. It's so easy on this bike. There it goes. Okay, and now we let it leak for a while. So guys, now for an oil and oil filter change on the Yamaha Diversion, what do we need? Actually, very less tools, not much. We need tools, uh, a socket for the oil filter, this one is a Chinese thing, I think, it's the FN005 with a lot of Chinese scribbles onto it, this one we need, then we need socket 19, goes on to the uh, oil filter removal tool, a ratchet that goes on there, and to get the oil plug out we need socket 17, an extension bar and my ratchet and of course we need a torque wrench to torque the oil filter and the drain plug. So, and we need an oil filter. As you know by now, hopefully you're subscribed to my channel. Really would appreciate it. I always use high flow filter oil. And why? That's actually simple. I never ever had a problem with high flow filter oil. It always fits good, it does the job and it costs less than the original Yamaha filter. And this one is equal or exceeds exceed the OEM specifications. And it also has a German TÜV certification. Okay. We need a new copper washer, and that is a copper washer of 
14 mil. Oké. Okay. Uh, even kijken. De oilfilter, de copper wash and of course we need oil. I have my favorite brand over here. Kestrel Power RS. 10W40. It's half synthetic. Which I love. Um, why? Well, same as high flow filter. -o. I use this uh, oil for years and years in my own bikes. Never had a problem with it. No, no oil consumption is barely nothing. Even on my Beamer, the Boxer, they say it uses a bit of oil, but ours barely. So that's why I use Castrol. It's not the cheapest. Um, I think it's also not the most expensive. It's just for me, for the price, the best oil. Mm. Now we're going back to the diversion. Guys, what I always do when draining the oil from a bike is lean it over to this side to that side because an engine always has oil pockets as they call it and those are places where oil is still in and by leaning it over you drain that bit of oil too and that's what I always want get as max get as much oil old oil out of an engine so luckily I have a winch so nothing can happen carefully don't drop the bike so. and then hold it like this for a few hours <laughs> No, no, just half an hour. This side. Wait a minute. So yet. Straight up. Uh, yep. There he goes again. So, now we let it lean to the other side. Okay. Meanwhile, I could lubricate the side stand. It's Fast. That's easy. Get some oil. This is just engine oil. Wiggle it. Make sure it goes in. In the joint. What it's called. 
Much better. Whoa! No! Oh, yeah, there was never a, a rubber. Okay. Give it a bit of a clean. And don't forget, behind your side stand is a spring. And the spring has a yeah, a rotating point too. Don't forget to lubricate that too. And that's also easy, denk ik. Yep. Hoppa. Yes. Just for fun. Okay. Yes. I'll clean my tip. Now we're gonna lean the bike. We get the bike straight up. That's easy. Hey, see I'm missing a bolt over here. Now we're holding the bike straight up and as you can see oil already starts to drip out. As you might can see on the other side the flasher light, blinker light is broken off. Already got a new one. quickly dripping now, which is good. Okay, now we carefully lean it up, 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 up to this side. So now all the pockets are emptying their old oil. And in the meanwhile, we can give this a lubrication. The gear shifter, uh, the foot stands, packs, how you call them. Yeah, it has some mileage. What? Nothing wrong with the bike. No, this one too. Then we gotta go and hold it straight up like this. Oh, kijk. There it comes. It's not much, but all in all, I think I get a, a cup even more extra out of it. Do, 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 do. Meanwhile, always a good plan to start checking things because this is a total different angle looking at your bike as normally when you stand you only look down and now you can look underneath stuff see if everything is still okay which is, yeah, it's 
think it's from 1998. Oh, 20 plus years. Nice, nice red color. I like it. I like it, I like it. It's a bit sweating. And that's... This is an air oil cooled engine. So it depends on the, the wind as you drive to cool down. But also when warming up the engine, the outer cylinders has three sides, let's say three sides to cool the front, the, this side and the rear. But the two inner cylinders warm up faster, especially in the warm up procedure of this bike when you start driving it with an air cool bike like this you have to be easy on it don't rev high no if you do that if you start pushing the bike right away then your cylinder head starts to warp and it's because the inner cylinders warm up quicker than the outer ones and that, then you get warpage and it starts to sweat. See? That's what I yeah, sometimes see. People take their bikes, whoop, go onto the, the highway, push the throttle wide open. You have to be very gentle with it during the warm-up phase. That prevents this from happening. And when this happens, the only thing you can do is, not sure, perhaps you can do it with the engine still in the frame, not sure, but get your cylinder head and your cylinder off as it sweats also, I think over here. Get two new gaskets, let your, you have to do that, let your um, head, yeah, sand, mill, I'm not sure, to make it, to get that warpage out, then torque it again, put it all together, torque it again, and then that sweating is, yeah, over. It's a lot of work. We're going to fill that up with oil. First we're going to mount the oil filter. Easy. My first thing what I'm going to do is clean. Make sure it's spotless. Put it over there so you can see it a bit. I guess. <laughs> oil filter needs to be torqued with 17 newton meters. I got my torque wrench and I'm going to set it to 17. 17 is here. I think I need more an extension. Hmm. Maybe this one. And of course the thing to tour. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I got my oil filter. Oh. It's already uh, greased up, but good practice. Always lubricate the rubber oil seal. 
guys. Now it's easy. Come on over. Oh. Okay. Papa. And then take my dark wrench. Yep. Now guys, we're going to install the uh, oil drain plug. First, we give it a clean, as always. On the outside. And, oh, ow, ow. Sharp. Hmm. So be careful. Okay. Then we have a new copper washer. We're gonna give that a clean too. The drain plug needs to be torqued with 43 newton meters. So let's do that. Socket 17. No, need a short extension bar. This one will do. 43. Okay. And that's over there. Okay, and as you know by now, screw it back. Until you feel the drag, and there it needs to be up. Then the most important, guys, torqued. Uh, uh, this one. Yes, 